Perfect. So welcome to our module five of our Wednesday's webinar series, Wednesday's meetings, right? It's almost like you now five weeks already. Actually, we'll be, we had a little break, two weeks uh, because of some conflicts, but we are back. And this is the, not the last one, that's the one before the last one. Um, so I'm super excited. That's actually my favorite, the telescope meetings. I'm super excited today to talk about telescopes. I'm super excited about your feedback. Um, just a little quick, some uh, house, uh, house rules here and also housekeeping rules. And also want to remind you, our last webinar, Module 4, is now also online on YouTube. So our YouTube channel, you will be able to uh, see it, to watch it multiple times. And uh, then it's maybe good preparation for this one. Thank you. A couple housekeeping. Um, our Google series calendar you see here, October 2nd will be the last one, uh, official one of our series, the attachment bar solutions. Um, our partial module is coming and a bonus, I promise, from the beginning. So that's not on the calendar yet. We will definitely uh, will send an email out as soon as we have that ready to go. Also, I would love to... Um, say thank you to Dental CE Solutions for the CE credits. Um, at the very end of the webinar, you will see a QR code. Please uh, make a screenshot, tag it with your phone or whatsoever to save that, that QR code that will allow you to have your CE credits for that session. Um, little conflict of interest, we have to say that every time. So we have no financial interest in the lecture. We're not getting paid for that, Veronica and me and also no family members. And then a little bit about myself, whoever is the first time with us today. Uh, my name is Alexander Vinci. I am the co-owner and vice president of Zahn Technique in Miami. Zahn Technique is a dental laboratory, a high-end boutique laboratory. We are specialized on full arch, full mouth rehabilitations, on aesthetic cases, we have tons of veneer cases and implant cases. So that's kind of our expertise where we are. Uh, I'm from Germany. I moved to the States in 2009. And in 2010, I joined Zahn Technique, which by the way, is the oldest laboratory in Miami founded in 1970. And my wife, Danielle, my business partner, and Danielle and me, we took over Zahn Technique in 2014. And since then, we're thriving it. We're trying to grow more and more, of course, and getting better. We are definitely uh, experts in digital dentistry. That's our one of our expertises in implant and aesthetic dentistry. We're always combining it with the digital or digilog. I uh, will discuss this as well today. And then I'm very excited to uh, introduce everybody to Veronica. Veronica Krakova joined us in May. And yeah, just introduce yourself, Veronica. Good evening. So my name is Veronica. I am originally from the Czech Republic from Prague. I went to dental tech school there for four years. And then I moved to the States. I went to Portland, Maine. Actually, I moved there and I lived there for almost 29 years. And when my daughter... Um, actually grew up and got a job, I kind of felt like it's time for a change personally and professionally, even though I loved running my small removable dental studio up there in Portland. I am super happy being in Miami with these guys. So Yeah, I'm super happy to have you. And she's a great add-on to us. She is our removable department manager and she's keeping us in check here, especially on our removable cases and full arch cases and so on. So she's definitely an amazing add-on for our team here. She's one of the kind of the first now our stars. We want to create that star technician team here at Zahn Technique. So definitely I'm very happy to have you here. Yeah, that's so, our beginning, right? Yeah, I would say a little bit of a recap of all the modulars where we started. So the first module was basically very specific to the foundations of a great final restoration. So that was the impression and the landmarks as well as establishing BDO. Then in our second modular, we did the importance of a try-in. We talked about two shapes and shades and occlusion as far as curve of Wilson and curve of speed. Then the following modular covered digital dentistry and digital equipment. We also talked about printing versus milling and touched a little bit on digital partial dentures. The following modular was talking about implant overdentures and attachment varieties that are out there available to you today. 
Yeah, and today we're catching up with telescopes, not the telescope for the universe, what you see here. We don't want to see in stars or the moon and the sun. No, we're actually talking about the real ones, right? The telescopes in the patient's mouth. And we also call it the German crown. Um, why the German crown? Because I think the first telescope restorations were most likely done in Germany. But besides that, when I used to have my lab in Germany and was working with my family, by the way, my whole family is in dentistry. They're all dentists and dental technicians. So you can imagine I wasn't allowed to do anything else. But what I did back in Germany basically was everyday telescopic restorations. So I'm really born with it. I, I lived it and I'm still living it. And I brought it to the States and it was interesting here in the United States, not a lot of people did telescopes and uh, just a very, very few laboratories, good friend of mine, they do telescopes here and a few dentists. And we're realizing now actually it's getting more and more, which is amazing. So we have now, again, maybe not daily, but definitely weekly or monthly telescope cases coming into our office here into the laboratory and we're tackling them, right? And we want to just take you now on a little journey for the next hour, next 45 minutes um, through our cases, to different case scenarios, basically what's actually going on. So this was our initial case when the patient came in and we're looking at many different factors in the telescopic restoration. So for example, hygiene is very important. The aesthetics, the maintenance of the telescopic restoration is very good for the patient. Right. So you're going to catch up with this case in a couple of slides. I want to discuss very quick or actually explain very quick what actually are telescopes. Um, there is sometimes a little bit of a misunderstanding because sometimes you say, oh, make a telescopic bridge, right? We do these, these primary crowns and we're cementing a bridge on top. This is not a telescope case. Yeah, it's a telescope copic something, but it's not what you're actually understanding under a telescope case. So a telescope initially is a primary crown with parallel walls, what you see here, right? Very simplified uh, pictured. And then we have on top of this, a secondary crown or secondary coping, which slides over it, right? Which is a very, very intimate fit. We talk about maybe two to three micron. Interesting is getting really then when we compare telescopes with conus. Conus is something completely different. Even if it looks very similar to telescopes, because it's also like a double crown, a primary crown mm -hmm. and a secondary constructions, maybe even tertiary on top. But what you can see here already on the images, the conus has a taper. The telescope is parallel. Right. And I will show it in a later slide again. Telescopes, we talk about zero to two degree taper. In this kind of range, I call it the telescopes. Everything more than two degrees is actually a conus. The main kind of difference and the main important difference are, are on these two different uh, double crowns is the friction or adhesion. Actually, they actually fit and actually they actually hold off that restoration over that primary crown. On a conus, we work with friction. What does friction do? Friction is wearing both materials out, right? And actually then we may lose friction or we locking it in. A telescope's work with adhesion. What is adhesion? Well, remember in kindergarten or preschool, we had this game, we had these two glass plates with a drop of water, we put them together and we cannot take them apart anymore. That's adhesion. They can slide, but they cannot, basically cannot pull them. That's how telescopes work, right? So with some saliva, these two crowns that slide on top of each other and actually holding at that position, especially when you have multiple of these. So that's how actually the very simplified function of a telescopic crown works. What excites me on that, on that telescopic crown is the longevity. We talk about 10 to 12 years, actually even longer, if I'm honest, Telescopic, I'm here now since 15 years. If I go back to Germany in my mind, when I did telescopic crowns, I'm a technician since now three decades. I did telescope crowns that 25, over 25 years ago already. These cases are still in a patient's mouth. They work, right? So that's really, really cool. It's a very passive fit of the restoration if it's done right. And the accuracy is amazing. The, the way we're doing it here with Galvano, what we're going to show in a few slides, uh, goes to an accuracy down to two to four micron, which is not achievable in dentistry with any other method to do. If you are looking into milling, 
right, into a milled titanium bar from the best billing center in the world, they work on a 50 to 60 micron if it's really accurate. And that's accurate, right? So now we're talking about the two to four micron fit. And telescopes are actually very low in maintenance, which is really cool too, right? Conus, we talk about longevity to two to three years. And honestly, that's actually long for conus, right? Because it's a friction fit. What happens, it's wearing out both surfaces and then most of the time out of metal. And the result of that is either loosening of the prosthesis that falls out or locking in and you have to cut it out. So I don't really recommend conus cases except for very specific uh, instances or so, but usually we go with telescopes. So here uh, we see a live telescope, right? We see that primary crown. We see that little white margin in zirconia, the gold coping over it. It's a very, very intimate fit. If you zoom in, you don't see any gapping here, right? And um, again, this specific crown, you see on the right side, the, the zirconia, it is the zirconia crown. It is a zero to two degree taper, what we're achieving here. Right, and then we have that Galvano coping over, and I want to now explain more in detail how that actually works. So we have that um, zirconia crown. We serve in milling it basically, and serve in polishing it, and then apply a silver lacquer on top. And that silver lacquer, uh, by the way, we also connecting it to a little wire. You see here, these all connected in that liquid to a wire, and you're running a current through that wire into the liquid, where's a magnet rotating it. Let me go back very quick. It's pretty interesting actually to see. You see that white magnet rotating. So that whole mechanism basically has the result of, you see left to right, applying that gold, which is in that liquid, uh, layering onto the silver lacquer. And that high, that gold is a gold content of over 99% in that liquid, right? And that's like that that accuracy, what, what we what we're achieving here. It's a very thin skin of gold, 0.3 millimeters basically. It's a very thin skin. And that's has to result in high accuracy and reproductibility. And again, we go back to the initial slide of the patient, how he came in. And now we are doing a verification jig in every single case. And we do that to establish very, very accurate fit. Now, digitally, we do design a prototype, basically a try-in, then that goes into the doctor's office. Well, basically, it's mm -hmm. go back, right, to our modules. Uh, what was it? Module three, where we talked about digital mm -hmm. ventures. Yes. Same workflow, right? Mm -hmm. So... If you want to know how to establish a prototype, just go back to module three in YouTube, watch it very quick and you're ready to go, right? So then here, after the try-in, the case comes back to us and then we go back into the digital dentistry and now we start establishing the parallels of the implants and the conus abutments. Right? Telescopic abutments, yeah. So all what you see green here, that's basically the parallel areas, right? That's where it's parallel. The yellow areas are the margin or the top. All green areas are parallel to each other. So every single telescope has to be parallel to each other so that we have the same path of insertion. That's very important. And yes, theoretically, we could also design conus because in, in my software, I can type in mm. the angle I want. I would like to have it tapered. But in usually we don't do that, right? We maybe have a very like satellite implant somewhere in the back with some zygomatics or so, and it's very angled. And I have to go maybe with a more conical angle for the path of insertion, but all the others would be usually telescopes. Yeah, you see it here actually in the nice path of insertion all together. And then we have the milled and zirconia. We then bonding the, it's a buttons bay, custom abutments, you're bonding the zirconia to a titanium base, and we go back on the master cast and we'll serve and mill and serve and polish them with a specific special serving mill, a manual serving milling basically on an apparatus where everything is the same path of insertion. The highly polished, high shine polish is so important because that's responsible for that nice fit and nice slide of that gold coping going in and out. Then we're connecting that tie base, that metal, you see here slightly shimmering through that red base and that pen resin to a wire. And we put um, applying the silver lacquer on top. And you also see on the left side of one left telescope here, that silver lacquer is connected with a little painting to that wire. 
that's responsible to let the current run through the wire to the silver lacquer over the whole telescope. And then again, you're putting it in a liquid in the Galvano machine and the current runs through and is responsible for layering the gold on top of the silver. And here, because of the silver lacquer, we're able to actually lift these gold coatings off the zirconia. And that's so important because it's not a fixed case. It's not connected to the zirconia. It's actually sliding on and off that abutment in this case, right? So we put them back on the abutments and be able to scan to digitize that master cast with now the telescopic abutments and the gold copings on top. That allows us now to design actually the restoration. In this case, we're designing a, we call it the tertiary structure. So the primary structure is the abutment. The secondary coping or secondary structure is the gold galvana coping. Mm -hmm. the, ter the third one, the tertiary structure, is in this case a pecton frame, but we designed in individual preps. And then, of course, the crowns on top, right? So that's a very high restoration we did here. So we created actually a pecton frame uh, fitting over the gold copings and with here wax crowns that later on pressed and lift in the silicon. So then here we have the finished restoration. Basically, we're doing a pickup of the gold intra, pickup of the gold copings, excuse me, intra orally for the best and passive fit. Right. And that is so important, right? Because mm -hmm. we we have a great verified model, but since we're talking about two to four micron accuracy, we want to make sure that restoration really slides in and out the mouth perfectly with a perfect fit. Mm -hmm doesn't wear each other out, right? It doesn't lock in. So ideally we do an intro pickup, yep. which is extremely accurate. And then as far as the cementing goes, you do not want to use the light cured cement because there is no light coming through anywhere. So it's important to definitely do dual, dual cure cement and you can use any at your own preference. So basically the GC has the link force. There's the multi-link real IX, also Fanavia. And here's the final restoration. Yeah, final case. Yeah, that's a beautiful case. Very happy patient. Um, also, quick hint here. You see the pecton is highly sh high shine polished, the entire surface. We always do that to keep actually the entire surface in pecton mm -hmm. for hygiene, right? Because pecton is a very nice material where actually usually nothing really sticks on. It's a high-performance polymer. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's high shine polished, very highly polished, Nothing will tease, tease to that or adhere to that material like plaque or bacteria. So it's a very clean restoration. And here we see the seating of the case. So we see the telescopic abutments, final case, and a happy patient. And you love the canines. I'm obsessed with the canines. <laughs> if I ever have to replace my canines, I'm going to have them like him. <laughs> Okay, so our next case is actually a design for a lower partial denture. So in this case, the telescopes are going to be too supported, not implant supported. And that I think is is the core. Cool, and we come most I will repeat that later on the conclusion. But I love telescopes so much because we can do it in implants or in teeth or in the combinations. That's so cool. Yeah, this is your favorite modular. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm talking so much. <laughs> So basically the copings get um, melt, right? Yeah. We melt yeah. the coping. So, so here they'll start to melt on the model on that master cast, right? So we did basically a, a, an intro pickup of the mm -hmm. copings, what we see here, it created a durally dice, mm -hmm. right? And then have them survey milled on that model. And then we proceed with the galvanized copings? Yeah, the galvana copings. Galvana copings. And, and then we have a tertiary frame, which would be a normal cast frame, but you see no clasps here because everything is supported by the conus. By the, I, mean, by the the conus. Conus. I keep saying conus. I don't know why that yeah. is just sticking in my mind. That's a, that's a big flaw. <laughs> no, <it's> exactly. <laughs> no, tell us, I am banned so, from, from this modular. <laughs> so we see here um, the battle frame work. Um, yeah, the good thing is there are no clasping, right? That's important. Um, very aesthetic and that goes to the patient's mouth, right? So now we see basically um, the patient's initial situation. We usually, in this uh, appointment, we do a quick wax try and a partial, partial setup, wax setup with uh, denture teeth, and then utilizing the uh, zirconia copings in the mouth, sliding on the galvano copings, 
and then utilizing that partial framework for picking up the galvanic copings off the zirconia grounds. That's like the key here to have a perfect fit. And that goes back to the laboratory then to actually finish the case. Can you go back to that yeah. previous slide actually? Can you talk a little bit about why do we have holes around? Oh, great. The frame? Thank you. Great, great, great hint. So you see here that metal framework is designed with two holes on the occlusal buccal surface or facial surface. Why is that? Well, you have to imagine there are multiple layers, right? We have the primary crown, we have a gold coping and we have a tertiary structure and you want to veneer it. So we're talking about four layers. That sounds like, oh my God, I don't want to do telescopes. No, there are tricks and there are like workflows mm -hmm. to still have it a beautiful aesthetic, even with four layers, because all these layers are very thin. But to make it even more thin and even have more space for aesthetics, we cutting the area where we don't need a lot of metal support, right? For example, on that buckle area, on that tooth, we don't need a lot of thick, uh, kind of a core or uh, a framework material. We just need veneering material over that gold, right? So we actually can cut a hole. That's one reason. The other reason is for the clinician to pick up with that cement, the gold copings, it serves us as a vent hole, basically. So the excess cement can vent out in this area. You can use a Q-tip or a, a micro brush cleaning up, basically, letting it set and then taking out the whole restoration out of the patient's mouth. And that goes back in the lab mm -hmm. and we can finish it, right? You see here then we finish the restoration and um, here the two telescopes taken apart and it will be delivered to the patient or to the doctor for the patient delivery. What I like in this case, it's a partial. There is no clasping. There's the metal to show from any aesthetic areas. What also is really cool on this, we just prep two teeth, not four teeth, like we would do uh, precision attachments, right? With lingual arms and all these things. It's not necessary here. We just prep two teeth for a nice partial here. It's definitely very, kind of for a case like this, I would say minimal invasive even, right? It's really, really cool. Yeah, and then um, more something more significant here. We, this is a full arch case. We just, just actually a, a few months ago, um, Treatment planning a telescope case. That's like, I want to show you now, I want to walk you through A to Z, right? The whole process of treatment planning and finalizing a full arch case, tooth board. Tooth board is a little bit more tricky than implant supported telescope cases. Why? Because obviously teeth are ligaments and they're slightly moving, right? So we have to try to keep full control over teeth. They're not as stable as implants. So here in this case, um, that patient had old restorations. They were just ready to take it out. And also we had to do some, on the knees, so the, our client had to do some extractions here. And then we were planning a case. So that was the initial pre-op situation. What I do usually, I take the pre-op and I will pre-prep the teeth to give you a prep guide, to give you an idea how much space do we need? How much do we have to prep, prepare basically to even accomplish a nice looking and functional telescope case. Also an occlusion, of course. And then we creating the primary crowns. And by the way, here I have the measurements on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is always a question that comes up with any kind of these restorations. How much space do I need to be able to successfully create this restoration? So basically the primary crown is anywhere from half a millimeter to 0 0.8. Then you have the secondary coping with the galvano at 0 0.3 millimeters. You also have to consider the tertiary frame, which is either chrome cobalt, titanium, or pectin. And that's around half a millimeter. And then the veneer anywhere from half a millimeter to one millimeter thickness. Right. So minimum reduction, you need two millimeters, basically, depending on each case situation. You know, there's slight variations, but... I would say that's about a good average too. Yeah, two millimeters, sometimes two and a half, 1.8, right? So in, in the range of two millimeters, I think that's a good reduction for telescopic crowns or telescopic restorations. I mean, keep in mind, um, these patients are not your minimal invasive veneer patient, right? These patients are patients who are actually trying to really accomplish something more complex. Um, either on this patient, for example, hey, he gets a full arch case without any implants, right? And look how many teeth in the anterior are already missing. These are six, six left over teeth. That could be six implants, but he doesn't 
or she or he doesn't have to go to a surgical procedure placing implants. So therefore, that's I, one of the biggest advantages in telescopes. We can skip the implants um, either financially or maybe also clinically when they're not possible to put in. So then we delivering the telescopic crowns to the doctor's office. Usually in this case, we didn't, but usually a custom tray. By the way, it's a different impression than actually the case. I did not have a photo of that, unfortunately, but that's the pickup impression of the telescopic crowns, the intro pickup with the custom tray usually, right? So why do we need that? Again, I'm, I mentioned tooth bore is a little bit different than implant bore. Mm -hmm. Tooth teeth are moving slightly. So we have to make a dural model for a nice master cast that we now can utilize this model to actually survey mill and survey polish mm -hmm. these telescopic crowns on that master cast, right? That's our cast where we're finishing, preparing and doing all this, the work on that case. Then we're going again to our Galvano process at this stage. What we see here, we have the Galvano copings, again, get scanned, digitized, and we're designing the church structure. In addition, at that step, we're also designing already a spare bridge or a your provisional, right? And that's a cool step, especially on toothborne telescopes, because at that after that appointment, what you're going to do or what you're going to get basically are the finished primary crowns with the secondary crowns and the tertiary structure and the provisional. And the provisional usually designed uh, as a copy of the pre-op or the wax up we did. And that is your tertiary frame. This is an SLM selected laser melted metal printing, basically metal frame, chrome cobalt frame. Fits perfectly over the primary and secondary construction. Mm -hmm. And then in your office, you're going to pick up these Galvano copings. At that point, you're actually cementing already the primary crowns in the patient's mouth and deliver the temporary be, be, be made at the same time, right? So that's the cool thing. The patient, usually the second or third appointment goes home with already a telescopic restorations in his mouth or her mouth. And we can then in the lab finish the restoration. Here in this case, we finished basically a bridge. There's no pink in this case, which is also a cool thing mm -hmm. on telescopes, right? We can design over dentures. We can design bridges. We can design partial. So we can design all these different restorations and they're all removable, which is amazing because for hygiene or for very tricky situations, it's amazing. It's retrievable, easy, and it's maintainable because a repair is quick and easy and the patient can have a spare, mm -hmm. right? which is the we do provisional right here, the final. So that will be usually a full arch implant case and six implants, what mm -hmm. we have here, right? And um, that definitely is a good solution. It's a beautiful restoration. Yeah. So here, the, you see how petite these cases mm -hmm. can be, right? They're not very large in the patient's mouth. This is a different case, a little bit of pink around the teeth um, to, to hide the transition zone, but that's almost like crown bridge, right? So these cases are just very... Uh, comfortable for the patients usually, if the patient accepts. So now, now is our conclusion. So basically making telescopes, it's space specific protocol sensitive workflow. You can do either tooth supported or implant supported, or you can do a combination. You can do a removable case or it's removable, but it's stable like a fixed restoration. Hygiene, it's very hy hygienic, right. I would say. Yeah. Maintenance is easy for the patients. You don't need to place any implants. There are no implants necessary in this case. Aesthetically, it's always the beautiful restoration and it has a very long lifespan. Long lifespan, yeah. So I wanna so. talk a little bit about the implants because that's like, I think, especially in the United States, a very important factor. Um, we're sometimes over hybriding our patients, right? Our, mm -hmm. our clientele and we're doing hybrids, screw it in hybrids, but we maybe shouldn't do it for specific reasons. Could be hygiene, could be age, could be so many different reasons, but also financially sometimes. So the patient has to pay for the surgeon or periodontist for the GP for the lab. If you think about if the patient still would have some strong and stable and healthy teeth left, and you can just prep them and give that patient a full arch bridge. How cool is that? I think that's like one of, for me, from, in my mind, that's the, one of the biggest advantages on the telescope bridge or over denture. We can actually 
wait for implants. I don't want to say skip implants because I love implants and I think implants are a very, very important pillar in our industry. But if we can stretch the time to put implants in the patient's mouth, I think that's a really good flow because like, if you think about you putting an artificial hip or a knee, right? You can just do so many on a human being and it just lasts so many years. You try to stretch out the time until you give that patient that hip or that knee. Same with implants, dental implants, right? We try, we should try to keep teeth as healthy as possible and try to have patients keeping their teeth as long as possible and then actually nurturing the patient until the implants have to go in at that point, nurture them out. I think that's a really good workflow. Uh, telescopes are ideal for that, right? That's perfect. Or actually then adding implants and make a combination. We do that quite a bit, right? Because it's removable. It's not fixed. It's not screwed fixed to the implants. We can actually combine uh, these restorations. We can combine implants and teeth with these restorations. I think that's, for me, like that's one of my, I'm so excited about that, right? We can really uh, extend lifespan on teeth you can tell i'm german in germany usually we try to keep teeth as long as possible right and then just doing implants later right that's a little bit different than here maybe but we see more and more people really turning on on telescopes here in the states we see it in our own laboratory we're getting more and more of these restorations and we really have very happy patients with them. so and therefore i am or we are coming to an end I want to say thank you. Perfect.